All right, so next we've got our poker card um, and our poker chip, and we're going to texture these. We're also going to texture um, kind of like a table, like felt table type environment. So uh, what I'm going to do is, um, the way I'm going to texture these is I actually um, scanned in some reference images that I'm going to use to put right on the texture, and then I'll add some bump map and some different things to them. So um, let's first grab our, um, our poker chip. So I'm going to go to the color channel. I'm going to click load image. Um, and then I have these poker chips um, textures that I previously made. So let's do our red chip first. <clears throat> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a slight reflection to it. Um, and give it some blur so that way um, when the lights and stuff hit it it has very subtle reflection um, but it's very blurry so it's not necessarily metallic but it does reflect things so I'm gonna add um, a Fresnel channel to that and I'm gonna blur it to like 10% and that's going to create some nice blur but not enough to actually do a whole lot with so very very subtle um, do it like that okay and then I'm gonna throw it on my poker chip and right away it's going to do this kind of warpy thing, so I'm going to drop it into cubic mode. And I'm just going to play with my scale and my length here to try to get something that I think will work. So, close, a little big, which we have like 425. Um, maybe not quite. Almost there. Um, if it rotate on top, it's almost there. Still airing a little bit on the oversized side. So try to drop it down to like 375. That might be too small. Okay. I'll drop to 385. Um, and this isn't the most exact way to texture. Um, this is just a quicker way to do it. Um, you can actually take things in and um, you know do UV maps and everything. Um, but this is just for this process is a little quicker. Okay, cool. I think it looks pretty good. If I tap render, oh, whoops, turn GI off. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, sweet. So, it's pretty on both sides. Now what I need to do is if I look, if I look, go back and look at that original um, kind of poker chip that um, I showed you guys was my um, kind of references. You look at this poker chip, it has these white pieces in the middle inside the ridge, and it also has these white edges on the end. So remember we broke it out um, for that reason um, with three layers high, so that way I could grab these um, and easily apply the textures to them. So if we look at the chip, I'm going to go every two and then every four. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select it. So the way that works is I'm going to do face selection, um, and I'm just going to go around this chip here, and I'm going to grab um, the faces. So I'm going to do two, whoops, so a little bit more here. Do these two, and then I'm going to space three, four. We'll see how four looks. Cool. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I actually have a plain white texture also that I um, mocked up in Photoshop. Basically, what I did is I took that white kind of texture from the poker, the white poker chip, um, and I just made a little tileable um, texture out of it. And then I'm going to throw that. When you have faces selected, you can just throw a texture right on it, and it's going to create the selection tag for you and apply it only to those areas. So now we've got that, which looks pretty good. Um, and then we'll do the same thing for the um, the inside and that's about every other one it looks like so I'll probably double up with those and go same thing 
we'll go one two skip two one two skip two oops now I don't want to really necessarily select that ridge so be careful when you grab it cool and then same thing I'll just drag and drop these right on there bam um, and that is my texture chip um, I can also flip down on the bottom and do the same thing so I'll do that quick boom all right so I just selected same thing just soft select it, or select it like that and apply it cool so now I have this poker chip it's all ready to go so here's a really cool thing when you build your textures out properly so if I show you that um, that texture file real quick that I made um, Basically, my blue chip is exactly the same laid out in space uh, as a PNG as my red chip is, as my white chip is. So, all I have to do is replace that texture now, and I am going to easily be able to drop replace all of those locations um, directly on the chip exactly the same way. So, I'm going to duplicate the chip itself. Um, if the chip is selected and I hit control, you'll see this kind of um, double box pop up. I can drag this and that's basically just making a copy in space. So I'll do the same thing um, with this one. And now I can do a blue chip, a white chip, all simply by, I'm going to label these quickly. Same thing, drag and drop. And then I'm going to make this one the blue chip. And then I'll do one for the white chip as well. So now I can double click. And I can go into that texture and I can load a new image. And I'm just going to go select the blue chip. And then I'll do the same thing for white. And the only trick with the white one is that I'll have to duplicate the texture because it has blue in it as well. And I'll load up a new image and do the blue color. Okay. And then just type. Blue texture. Cool. And then it's just um, replacing these textures on their objects. So we'll call this one red chip. We'll call this one our blue chip. And we'll call this one our white chip. And then it's just dragging and replacing the texture. Boom. It'll replace all the data exactly where it is um, as far as the mapping and everything that you did. Um, or it should. Whoops. Cool. So for the white one, um, it has the blue ridges instead of the white, so you just need to drag that one over the white parts, and it should easily replace those areas. Boom, and you're good to go. So uh, there you go, your chips are textured, and if you render them, uh, they look pretty great. So there's your poker chips. Um, then we'll do the card next. So for the card, there's a couple tricks. Um, the first thing is I want to duplicate this out so I can save this right now um, and then I'm going to take this card and I'm actually going to make it editable. So make that editable and then basically what I have now is I have the um, the top cap or the top side of the card. There's some thickness to it because it's a card. The bottom side of the card and then I also have, if I if I separate all three of these things out, I also have the ridge that the card sits on. So what I'm going to do is I want to combine all three of these things and do group objects. So I have no object. So I'm going to texture them separately and then I'm going to um, convert them all to one object. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to import again. Like I scanned some of these textures in. This is the um, the way I did this project. Um, and so I'm going to select um, my Ace of Spades for one side, um, and I'm going to put. Um, a very subtle bump and specular map on it and I'll show you what I did for that. So for the bump and specular I did a very subtle uh, first I did it pretty big like little little dots and then I went even smaller to give it if you look at the card 
Um, I'll show you in the reference imagery here. If you get really close, you can see there's kind of these little ridges and stuff, and they affect the reflection and the bump of the card. So I want to mimic that a little bit with my lighting. Um, and so I'm going to do it on the texture so that shows up when I light it. So I'm going to add this. But I'm going to do it very subtly, like uh, maybe 9%. And then I'm going to copy that channel. And I'm going to paste it onto my specular. And so that's just when the lighting happens, it's just going to create kind of a different look um, for us. I'm actually going to drop it down just a little bit so it's not quite as dark. Cool. So I throw that on my cap, make it cubic, and same thing, I'm just going to scale it up. The cool part of this is we already um, got the exact dimension, so it's just about lining up your edges. Okay, and then we just throw a light in the scene quickly. You can see kind of what that specular does here. So you can see it kind of creates the ridges in there. It looks really nice. Uh, the texture is very tangible. It feels really cool. Um, not that I can feel it in my hands, obviously, but you can tell that there's texture to that card. Okay. Awesome. So then same thing, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that out to make the front of the card. I'm gonna reload my color channel. I'm gonna reload the image of the front of my card or the back of my card rather. And that texture and bump is already there. It still applies. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip this whole thing over. I'm gonna drop it right on the other side. Same thing, make it cubic. Um, what were my settings here? 297409. Then we can just pop this guy into place. Feels really cool. Okay. And then I'm going to load up a texture that I made for the sides. Um, and I just duplicated um, one of the edges. And I'm just going to toss that. I'm not going to worry about the specular and the bump on this one because it's um, it's just the side. I don't need to spend that much in the detail of the edge of the card. So I'm just going to toss that on the extrusion side and just do cubic again. So now it should be there. So if I render that. Let's toss another light in there just to see what's going on on the bottom side here. Cool. So create a nice edge there. It looks really nice. Uh, if I flip the card over. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect objects and delete. And that should combine it into now one super nice null object. I'll actually name it Ace of Spades. My selection tags and everything are ready to go, and I now have this card that I can work with. Cool part about this is, is if I scanned in other parts of the card, which I believe I did, I can go in here and I can just load up a new image, and I can go find, for instance, the Jack of Spades, and then all I need to do is Alt replace that one texture, and I can switch out the cards all day long. So um, that's what's great about setting yourself up uh, with textures and good. Um, good texture maps is they're replaceable when you're doing things like this specifically. Okay, cool. So that's how you texture the chips and the card. Um, we'll do one last thing. We'll make a plane here for the ground for all these things to sit on. And we will texture that as well with kind of like a, uh, a felt type material. So what we're going to do for that is, again, I found a, a texture of a felt table um, and this and then I took it into Photoshop and I made it tileable and um, 
gonna turn off the specular. And under the bump, I'm going to use, um, I did a, a grayscale image of that one to create a very subtle bump map. Again, nothing super heavy, but just enough. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I need because the texture's really nice. And then one of the other things I'm gonna do is I'm going to make it seamless. And I'm going to see how that feels as a cubic. Feels a little small. Let me up these textures about 200%. Bigger. All right, let's see how that feels now. And I just threw a light in the scene here, so the lighting isn't super pretty, but you get the idea. Okay, so that kind of creates a felt table. So there you go. Um, that's how you do your textures. And um, next, we'll jump into uh, setting up your scene and then getting ready to light it and render it.